I've been getting a lot of questions on how I stay so organized and the truth is I am not organized at all. When I plan out my day, I always have the chores I have to get done. High priority things like feeding the horses, checking the waters, cleaning out all of the stalls and administering any medical care the horses might need. Once I'm done doing all those things, I usually pick one or two small chores to do for the day. This morning I am spreading out some of my Primo turds. These were actually put down last year and I just didn't do a very good job of dispersing them. This little grass area is where I introduce the boys to grass for the year. I need to get it irrigated a little bit so the grass gets a little bit taller before I put them out on it. So before I do anything else today, I am going to spread these guys around and then probably harrow them a little bit. I have one other big chore that I need to get done today, but when I'm done with that, I can go on to some more fun stuff. I'm really wanting to get some of the horses on the new shaky plate today. So hopefully today's chores won't take too terribly long. Out of the way I am gonna go check on some of the little baby grasses that are coming up right now we haven't really gotten much rain yet so they're not really growing very fast there are a few pretty bare patches in whiplash and goose's pasture so I'm gonna go and check those first it looks like the badger made a brand new hole that I'm gonna have to fill in here is a good look at some grass that I put down last year. It isn't very long right now, but it is really in the ground solidly, like it's pretty hard to pull out. Typically when you reseed a pasture, the horses shouldn't graze on it for another year. And it looks like the gophers have been snatching all my little baby grasses. I am only finding a few little ones down here. These are very delicate and the gophers really like them because I imagine they're pretty tasty. Here is a small patch of them and they are not in the ground very solidly. This little one just came right out. So you can imagine if you turn horses out on this that they can rip all of the new grass right out of the ground. This is some grass from last year and it's pretty well established. With the weather getting nicer out, Huckleberry has been wandering off a little bit more. He really doesn't go very far, but one of the neighbors he used to visit quite often. They actually sold their house last year and he doesn't realize that the new owners do not want him coming over all the time. So I need to keep a pretty close eye on him. This area is looking pretty pitiful. It was part of the dry lot last year, so there are a lot of weeds coming up. Hopefully the new grass will start growing pretty soon so I'm not pulling weeds all summer. 
there isn't any serious irrigation on this place I just use a hose these sprinklers seem to work pretty well this is a different kind than I normally use I did need a new one and they were sold out of the ones that I like so I'm just going to adjust this and see if it works as good or hopefully maybe better than the ones I usually get. It should only be spraying the grass area so I'm just adjusting the sprayer head. Little Gus is getting pretty excited to go out on pasture for the spring. He is one that also gets excited to come out and do fun things every day. It has taken him quite a few years to settle down and get into the swing of things here. You hungry? Uh-oh. Are you kidding me? I am not sure what happened here, but the chain that is actually holding the gate shut is broken. For a temporary fix, I took one of the heavy-duty zip ties that came with the sprinkler head and reattached the chain. One of these boys was definitely messing with it, and I have a sneaking suspicion that it was probably Little Gus. He is definitely way too smart for his own good most of the time. With all of the manure spread and the sprinkler hooked up, it is now time to start irrigating. This is one of Huckleberry's most favorite activities for the springtime. I think this must be something to do with his border collie side. He really doesn't have anything to actually herd here, so herding this water is probably the close he's going to get. There are a few different ways you can adjust these sprinkler heads, and one of them is to make it spray a little bit spread out. And I just want it going as far as possible, so it will hopefully irrigate as much of the grass as it can reach. Huckleberry isn't being very much help with this. I also noticed there was a badger hole right where he was jumping, so before he got himself hurt, I decided that I probably should go ahead and fill that in. This was another hole that the badger dug up to eat gophers over the winter, so it was pretty big and he dug out a lot of dirt. This hole was definitely big enough that it could break one of the horse's legs or my leg or Huckleberry's leg. Once I got it all filled in, I could turn the water back on and Huckleberry was right back at it. Tiny has spent most of the evenings and night times mousing. So she doesn't actually get up until about 10 o'clock every morning. Hey, you want to get on? As soon as she gets up, she comes and finds me to turn on the shaky plate for her. She is turning into such a spoiled little cat. The next big task that I have to complete today is I will be vaccinating all of the horses. This is not going to be a how-to video or anything. I'm just going to show you how I do it. I would say for the majority of the horse-owning population, you are going to want your vet to vaccinate your horse. There are a few very important benefits to that. One being you have a record in case you travel anywhere. A lot of my horses don't travel and since I have so many, it's a little bit cheaper for me to do it with a big multi-dose vial. When I vaccinate all my horses, I use a fear-free approach. So each horse will get a few treats and while they're chewing is when I give them their shot. This is to distract them and also make a bit of a positive association with a kind of negative experience. Skeletor got a tiny bit upset, but that took no time at all. One of my biggest pet peeves I have when I see people vaccinate horses is they do the stab and run. Horses are very sensitive animals and you can almost never do it fast enough where they won't notice. 
I have found it is infinitely easier if you just prepare them for the tiny little poke and make it a better experience for them. Studman used to be really awful for this and as you can see he didn't move a muscle because he was so distracted by his tasty treats. <laughs> I'm gonna take some treats to go for Whiplash and Goose. A horse treat? It will be much easier just to catch them in their dry lot and do it out there. Huckleberry has really been eating a lot of horse treats lately. I don't think he knows the difference. So every once in a while, I give him a break and let him have one. These two boys are pretty well behaved. Whiplash really doesn't mind at all, but Goose is probably the hardest one I have to vaccinate. I'm only giving these guys a part of what they'll be vaccinated for this year. The vet will come out and do a rabies shot and a strangles vaccine on some of them. They will also get blood drawn for a Coggins test. And even though I've had Goose for quite some time, he still gets pretty scared when the vet tries to poke him. It really isn't a big deal for me to just do it myself. But if I had a needle shy horse I was preparing for the vet, I would do it about the same as I'm giving these horses their vaccines today. You could very easily give your horse a few treats and then poke them with something like a toothpick. That is actually how I got Goose ready to be poked with a needle. He still sometimes is extremely sensitive, but the last time I did him, he was actually really good. Whiplash is not really helping today because he just wants more treats. He might have actually been the right kind of distraction that Goose needed to get his vaccine in seamlessly. These two boys together took me less than five minutes to do, so I suppose I could give them each an extra treat. It is looking like Whiplash is about ready to shed out all of his winter hair and Goose has started Goose. losing some of his on his own already. With those first four boys done, I am going to move on to the next four. I will be catching up Little Gus, Big Gus, Pete, and Stewie. And it looks like Little Gus wants to be first in line today. He is so funny. Sometimes he still pins his ears at me, but I really don't take it personal. I have noticed that Stewie has been pestering the other horses lately, so I think they're over his shenanigans. It sounds like Pete and Gus are not happy that Stewie is leaving. Even when one of my horses gets used to being poked, I still do the same protocol with most of them. It is much easier to get these guys in a routine in case they ever need emergency vet care and need to be poked. Stewie did pull back a tiny little bit there, but I had a hold of him. Uh -oh. So it wasn't really a big deal. When I'm done with these four boys today, I am going to brush them a little bit. So they're going to stand tied in the small arena. Little Gus is waiting at the gate for me. He just gets really excited to do something different. It also looks like he is ready to lose his winter hair as well. I don't ever hard tie these horses when I'm poking them. It is a little tricky because I'm by myself, but in case of emergency, you do not want them hard tied to anything. Gus gets a little bit annoyed when I poke him, but he is pretty quick to forget when I give him a treat. He knows exactly what we're doing today and he is ready to just go and stand tied and take a nap for a little while. It seems like Huckleberry is getting a little bit tired of our activities today. I noticed that after a while the new sprinkler head is leaking so I think I'm going to switch back to the kind that I used last year. Hopefully they'll have a few back in stock when I go to the feed store again. I was extremely hopeful for these two boys today. Typically spring time can be hit or miss when I go to catch them. Pete looked like he was in a really good mood today so I thought I would be able to just walk up and put a halter on him. 
I gave him a few treats, but then he decided he wasn't really interested in getting caught. Not a big deal. I can just catch up Gus first. But as soon as I went to put his halter on, Gus got the idea that they would have a little run around. At first, these boys were staying just out of reach. I really don't like to play these games, so I just wait until they stand still and then go try and catch them. But after a minute or two, I realized that these boys were not going to cooperate. It's really not a big deal. I have nothing else to do today, so these boys can run around to their little heart's content, and when they're done, I will just catch them up. Huckleberry usually doesn't chase the horses, but he will try and get them to play with him, which is not particularly helpful in this case. After a few laps around the pen, I could tell that Pete was ready to come in. I kind of feel like Gus is holding Pete back a little bit every time that Pete tries to be brave and wants me to catch him right off the bat Gus will kind of convince him that they need to run around for a little bit. Pete still can get a little bit squirmy when I put his halter on so I always use a neck rope first with him. It really didn't take that much extra time maybe 7 to 10 minutes of them just trotting around. And Pete was pretty content to just come in with me and see what fun things we were doing today. He was a little bit nervous about the sprinkler and then wasn't quite sure about the hose on the ground. Hi, Pete. He gets braver every year, but he still is a little bit more cautious about things than the other horses. For him, I give him a handful of treats at one time and then I poke him. He used to be a little bit tricky, but I found that this works the best way for him. He doesn't even finish chewing his treats and I'm already done. I'm going to give him a few extra treats for good measure. Bye, Pete. And it sounds like Gus is ready to come in now. Pete is going to go out into the small arena and stand tied with the other horses. They are starting to get back in the routine of going back into work. It looks like Pete's winter hair is ready to come out too. He still has a few little white patches from his time at the other trainers. Okay, let's go. Gus was more than happy to come in since all of his friends were gone. I don't really know why, but Gus just really doesn't like me. I think he is just a very serious horse. He did not come from an auction. I actually had the chance to purchase him before they brought him to the sale. But I do think that they were having some trouble starting him under saddle and that is why he ended up needing a new home. He is due for a hoof trim so today while I have a few extra minutes I am going to go ahead and get him trimmed up. One thing that he does have trouble with in the spring is letting me pick up his back feet. Sometimes he can get to where he thinks he needs to kick at me. He just gets really nervous about lifting up his back legs sometimes, so I take it nice and slow. For some reason, this right one is way worse than the left. 
Today, he was being really weird about it and kind of locked up. So I went over to the other side to lift up the other leg first. He let me pick it out okay, but was still pretty nervous. He does have some pretty serious scarring on the inside of his hocks, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Studman is another one with a pretty gnarly scar on his leg, and he can sometimes get a little kicky with that leg too. When I'm done trimming Gus, I will show you guys what his scars look like. Once he settles down, he is really good about having his feet handled, but I need to take a few extra minutes with him some days. I just got a brand new pair of nippers, and I'm glad I did because Gus's feet are rock hard. I have found once I get the diet dialed in on these guys, they grow extremely hard hooves. Which is really great when you're trying to keep them barefoot, but when I go to trim them, it can be a little bit difficult. He has extremely thick hoof walls, which do take some muscle to get through. Gus is very serious about holding his feet up perfectly for me. It did not help that Skeletor was trying to nibble on him the whole entire time. Huckleberry. What happened to Dax? Huckleberry was picking out the best pieces of the hoof trimmings to eat. I don't let him eat the actual big hoof chunks, but he can eat the little tiny pieces that come off. As you guys can see, Skeletor was being a total stinker to poor Gus. I did not even notice until I looked at the video. This is what the scars on his hocks look like. These are very similar to what you'd get if you roped both of their hind legs or if he got caught in a fence. It's really hard to tell how that happened. His previous owners did not tell me. I bought him sight unseen off of a few pictures I saw on the internet. So when he was dropped off at my house, I didn't really feel like saying I couldn't take him just because of those scars. I also only paid $500 for him, so that's kind of one of the deals where you get what you pay for. I was going to do a video on him, but I really don't have very many videos from when I first got him. Other than a few little quirks, he was really, really good to start under saddle. I noticed that Huckleberry was across the way doing something he probably shouldn't have been. And after he slinked over, I could tell that something was not right. What is that? He definitely found something dead to roll in. Hold on, Stu. I wanted to do just a quick little brush of these guys to kind of see how their coats were coming out. Stewie's was not quite ready yet. He had a few chunks coming out, but nothing too serious. This may look like a lot of hair, but compared to what happens when they actually blow their hair coat, this is nothing. I'm just kind of getting the big chunks off of them now. And it looks like little Gus is much closer to losing all of his winter hair. This is coming out pretty easily. It is really satisfying when you take it all off in one fell swoop. But typically it comes out little bits at a time. It's okay, buddy. Old Pete is looking really healthy even with his winter right. hair still attached. Okay. He gets some of the prettiest dapples over winter. The dapples come up when the horses are basically really healthy. Since I do test my hay, it is pretty easy for me to make sure they're getting all of the vitamins and minerals that they may be lacking in their hay. He does look like he is a little bit dry around his mane. He is looking a little bit dingy, but all that red is his winter hair that's going to fall out pretty soon. Ciao, buddy. I don't know what Huckleberry's deal was today. Hey, that is a silly place to lay. Hey. 
Are you kidding me? Get up. Here. I have a feeling that he was just doing things to get on, attention because he could tell let's I go. was a little bit upset with him because he rolled in another dead animal. It may not seem like it, but it is getting closer to these horses' dinner time. It has taken me pretty much all day to do the few chores and get these guys caught up with their vaccines. I was really excited that Pete stuck around after I took his halter off for me to give him some extra scratches, even though I didn't have any treats. Gus wasn't as happy to stick around, but he did let me give him a few scratches before he went and pestered Pete. Stewie and little Gus were ready to get back to some shenanigans. As soon as I turned Stewie back out, he went right over to Gus and started chomping on him. Gus is a pretty chill horse and he doesn't really like disciplining Stewie, so he gets picked on a little bit. Generally, if he just ignores him, Stewie will leave him alone. I think these boys are going to be disappointed when they realize I'm just going to fill up their water and not turn them out on pasture. Once these guys are adjusted to the grass, they get turned out at night and they seem to think that that is going to be happening today. In the commotion, I noticed that Huckleberry had gone somewhere and I could not see him anywhere. Sometimes he gets a little bit scared when the horses are playing around. As I was combing the horizon for him, I noticed that he was pretty close to the neighbor's house, so I had to go over and get him. Come on! He did not really seem too upset that he had gotten caught. I don't think he understands that his dog friends aren't at their house anymore. Since Huckleberry is getting a little bit on the older side, we had been talking about getting a puppy for him to pal around with, but I cannot imagine if I got a puppy and Huckleberry taught it all of his bad tricks. He is a pretty good dog most of the time, but I don't know if I could put up with shenanigans from two cow dogs. Since this is his third offense for the day, he is going to spend the rest of his time in the truck. Even though it's almost close to their dinner time, I still have a few more horses to take care of. I am still going to do Prim and Frisco and Nigel today. Tiny is already pestering me to get back on her shaky plate for a second time today. Tiny. Oh my goodness. I can't get distracted though. I need to use up all of this file before it gets warm. So I am just gonna fill up a few syringes for the last couple of horses. One of my other pet peeves is when people vaccinate their own horses and they use one needle for all their horses. In my opinion, if you can't afford the 20 cents to give a horse a fresh needle every time you poke it, then you probably shouldn't have horses at all. I prefer to actually use two needles, one to poke the vial and one to poke the horse. Every time you poke something, it makes the needle a little bit more dull. So if you're working with a horse that may have an aversion to needles, you want to make sure that it is sharp. Another thing that I like to do with my sensitive horses is use a smaller gauge needle. Typically a 22 if they are super sensitive or learning. And then a 20 once they have the hang of it. 
Frisco Bill is an old hat at this. I actually usually vaccinate him in his stall with no halter on. But today I'll just do him like everybody else. Him and Nigel are so old that the risk is probably not worth continuing to vaccinate them much longer. That is something that you can discuss with your vet after your horse passes a certain age. But since I have the extra knowledge and I can keep a very close eye on these guys for any adverse reactions, I am going to do them this year. I haven't found a treat yet that is soft enough for Nigel to eat, so unfortunately he is not going to get any treats today. I don't think he's going to be too upset with me, but he probably won't stand as nice as everybody else. He doesn't squirm very much, but he does have a pretty thick winter coat still. Before I turn him out, I am just going to fix his little forelock. He has been getting it in his mash a lot lately, and since there aren't any bugs out yet, I am going to keep tying it up for the time being. I am a little bit behind schedule tonight, and I'm not going to get as much time as I hope to play with the rest of the horses. So tonight, Nigel is going to be the first horse that I put on the new shaky plate. I hadn't planned on putting him on it first, but he is the smallest, so it kind of makes sense. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put this permanently, so I haven't put it together yet. It is fully operational, but the two separate pieces can slide apart if something is heavy on them, like a full-size horse. This is pretty high off the ground, and I was a little bit worried that Nigel would step off of it accidentally. Once he started to feel what it was doing, I felt like I could turn it up and really see if he liked it. He seemed a little bit unsure of it at first, but he was being a super good boy. With the nicer weather, I have noticed that he's laying down to take a lot more naps. And after only a few minutes, he started to close his little eyeballs and he was actually starting to fall asleep on it. I initially bought this thinking it would help Skeletor, but I have a feeling that these old guys are going to like it even more. Nigel was standing perfectly calm even after I had turned it up quite a bit. I almost didn't want to wake him up from his little nap, but he needed to get back out and move his old body around. As soon as I was done with Nigel on the shaky plate, I needed to go and feed everybody their dinner before the sun went down. These two boys waited patiently for their dinner mash. While I was feeding the horses dinner, I noticed that this electrical box became ungrounded. I am not planning on having any more escapees anytime soon, so it was important that I noticed that before we had some loose horses again. I probably had enough time where I could have worked one or two of the horses, but sometimes it's nice to just relax and watch these guys eat their dinner and enjoy the nice warm weather. I am still getting used to being able to be outside in a t-shirt. My fleece lined jeans are now packed away in my winter clothes as well.
I am going to be watching these guys pretty closely for the next day or two. Sometimes they can get a little bit down after getting brought up to date. Having them eat off the ground will allow them to stretch their necks out and keep everything loosened up, hopefully. These two boys both look like they are ready to get back to work and learn something new. Boys? I've recently been scoping out some other arenas in the area that I can haul them to to get some miles on them this summer. They both have already been hauled quite a bit, but Stewie usually just stands tied to the trailer and Gus sometimes gets so nervous that he is unable to be ridden in a new place. So both of these boys are going to get out quite a bit this summer. I am really enjoying this nicer weather that we've been having, but I hope we do get some rain soon so the grass will spring up and I can finally get these guys out on some pasture. When I start working them, it's just way nicer for them to be able to get out and run and move around much more. I have found that this keeps their bodies in better condition. This year, these two boys will probably both get hauled around. With Whiplash being so old, I am going to have to play it by ear. He has really never been very many places in his life and it might be too much stress for him at his age. It would be nice to get him out and let him experience a few things just to keep his mind occupied. But at 20 years old, it might just be too much stress for him. I haven't decided if I'm going to turn him and Goose out with the rest of the boys when the pasture is open. I really want to get Scarlet out in a bigger pen and I think this one might be perfect for her to learn about fences. Just in case she thinks about escaping there are several more fences that she has to get through before she is completely escaped. Pretty much the only big task left on my to-do list for this spring is to go around and check all of the perimeter fences before I turn everybody out. I also have to fill in a few of the really big badger holes still, but I should be done with all of that within the next week so I can start getting ready to get some new horses in. There is an auction this weekend that I'm planning to go to, so I want to make sure I have everything ready in case the right horse comes along. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.